Hi, this is Lucretia Hayes, and I'm coming to you again today to talk to you a little more about sexual abuse and, and domestic violence. Um, one of the things that I think bears mentioning is that one is really no worse than the other when it comes to healing. Women who've been battered and abused, even verbally abused by their spouse or even men because men are also battered and sexually abused, but people who have been abused physically, verbally, or sexually all have to go through a common denominator when it comes to healing. And that first denominator is realizing that it's not their fault. And so today that's what I want to talk about is just letting you know that no matter what abuse you endured, whether it was as a child or as an adult, whether you were raped or whether you were molested, whether you were verbally abused, whether you were physically abused, the truth of the matter is there's nothing you could have done to deserve it. Now, case in point is this. I had a friend who once used to think that her boyfriend hitting her was funny. It was like his way of saying he loved her, and she understood it to be that way. And so it was a tragedy when later on when they got married, and then he shot her and killed her. Because in her mind, the violence was the thing that showed her that he loved her, and that's not how you should show someone that you love them. And so we have to retrain our thinking. It's never okay for a man to hit a woman or for a woman to hit a man. It's never okay for us to curse each other out, call each other out of our names and things like that. And it's absolutely never okay to have sex with someone who's not willing to have sex with you. If someone says no, that's a no, point blank and period. If they even seem like they're not sure, the best thing for you to do to protect yourself is just to back away right then. Now, sexual abuse is on the rise, but it's changed. Back in the older days, it was just plain and simple rape and molestation. You know, people saw something they wanted and they took it right there wherever they could take it at or broken houses and raped or whatever. Now, they have what they call date rape drugs, in which case you can be at a bar or at a party and someone will put something in your drink to lower your inhibitions so that they can have sex with you. And they have several different versions, and I'm still in the midst of doing research, but I will be bringing you more up-to-date information about these drugs. But they have some that makes you completely, that completely sedates you. It puts you to sleep. And then they have some that is more of an am amnesiac, which means it helps you to forget. And so you can have sex with whoever five or ten people and not remember it but only in bits and flashes and so we have to be so careful nowadays because there's so many things out there that empowers abusers and the problem with with us as survivors is we're not verbal enough we're not sharing our stories as much as we should and so it gives a certain amount of power to the abusers now when it comes to healing from things like that that is happening and then you realize, okay, this is not my fault. I couldn't have done anything to deserve this no matter what kind of person I am, no matter how I dress, no matter how I speak to other people. I don't deserve for another person to verbally, physically, or sexually abuse me. After you get past that point, the next point is to begin to rebuild your self-esteem. There is nothing that makes a person feel nasty. You're speaking from personal experience as someone else laying with them and against their will because it makes you feel like you were just a toilet that someone used. And, and I can't think of another analogy that's better than that. And who wants to feel that way? And so my job as a survivor of both verbal abuse physical abuse and also sexual abuse, both kinds, molestation and rape, then I feel like it's my job to share the information that I have and to let you know that just like I came out the other side and I can talk about my situations and talk about past history without the tears and without the heartache 
you can too the first step in doing that is just to admit hey something happened to me I had no control over it but to take back control what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about it and I'm gonna keep talking about it until I heal until the tears stop coming until the pain stops seizing my heart I'm gonna keep talking about it until other people are set free I'm gonna spread this word and the day will come you'll look up and the pain you thought that you would never be without you'll find yourself being completely free of it and that's what healing is healing doesn't happen just because you survived it healing is something you have to command in your life you have to say look I am so done with this I'm not going through it anymore I'm not gonna allow this to ruin the rest of my life it was one moment in time whether it was five minutes ten minutes an hour or one year of molestation it was one moment in my life and I refuse to let the rest of my life be defined by it and that is the place where you find healing and resolution I hope this was a blessing to you please 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 if you don't have my book yet pick up the rape of innocence taking captivity captive in which I share my story in great detail and my healing process you can get it at Amazon.com or you can visit my blog at http colon double four slash the rape of innocence dot blogspot dot com for ten dollars and it does come autographed. Thank you and have a blessed day.